This is sample exam two. Problem one, the probability that a particular type of rifle will fire is P. Given the rifle has fired in every one of K independent trials, what is the probability that it will fire, fire in every one of K additional independent trials? Solutions to sample exam two of eight. Problem number one, now we're going to let X equal that the rifle fires where it could fire or not fire and X would have a binomial with uh, n equal 1 and, and probability of firing of P and it tells us that the first K observations so the sum of each of rifle fire fired so and then it's asking about the next K times the rifle fires well, each of the Y1 and Y2 are binomials with N equal to K and probability P. So they're asking is the probability that the second K firings all fire. So is this Y2 equal to K given that Y1 is equal to K, meaning it fired all K times? Well, the, the firing of the rifle are independent. So y1 and y2 are independent so that's just a probability that k or y2 is equal to k that it fires every time well this is a binomial k choose k p to the k q to the k minus k which is just p to the k number two suppose the random variable x has a mean mu and a variance sigma squared what are the values of the numbers a and b such that a plus b times x has a mean of zero and variance of one problem number two we're given that a variable x has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared and we're asked to uh, choose A and B such that the mean is zero and the variance of A plus BX is equal to one. So let's find the mean of AX plus BX, or A plus BX, and that's A plus B times expected value of X, which is mu. So we set that equal to zero, and then we look at the variance of A plus BX. Well, since this is a constant, it, it doesn't affect the variance. So we look at the variance of BX, but the B comes out as squared. And here the variance of X is sigma squared. So that's B squared, sigma squared. Well, here we have two equations, two unknowns. The unknowns are A and B. So you can uh, solve each of these. You can solve this and B is equal to one over sigma. And then you can plug that in here and you get A is equal to uh, mu minus mu times sigma. Number three, a die is loaded in such a way that the probability of the face with J dots turning up is proportional to J for J equal one to six. What is the probability in one roll of the die that an even number of dots will turn up? <clears throat> Problem number three, we're asked the probability that X is even. And here we're saying that a given die, we let X equal the roll of a die, and it can take on the values one, two, three, four, five, or six. But the probabilities are such that the probability of a given number is proportional to how many dots it is. And so 21 is the normalizing constant that makes this uh, all summed to one. And so we want to find the probability that X is even. So that means the probability that X is 2 plus probability X is 4 plus probability X is 6. And these are the individual probabilities of those events. Add them together, you, you get 4 over 7. Number 4. Suppose X has a density function F of X equal to 3X squared. What is the expected area of a random isosceles right triangle with hypotenuse X? In problem number four, we're given that X 
is equal to a, a, a density of 3x squared and we want to find the expected area of a random isosceles right triangle with hypothesis x so an isosceles right triangle oop, this is a right angle it means uh, these two sides are the same and so we can use the Pythagorean theorem x squared equals c squared plus c squared those add together we can solve for c c squared is equal to one half x squared so we want to find the expected area well um, here that uh, we know the area is one half the base times the height so that's one half c squared but c squared is one half x so that we plug in that for here and that's one fourth x squared and the fourth is a constant so we factor it out and we need to find this uh, expected value of x squared well we have to to find that so we find the expected value of x squared that's uh, we put x squared here times the density we integrate over po all possible values we get three fifths and then we put that back in here and our final answer is three over twenty Problem number five. Identical twins come from the same sex, same egg, and hence are the same sex. Fraternal twins have a 50-50 chance of being the same sex. Among twins, the probability of a fraternal set is P, and an identical set is Q, equal 1 minus P. If the next set of twins are the same sex, what is the probability they are identical? So here, some of the we're going to set up some notation. We're going to let s equal that the twins are the same sex. So x prime is that they're different sex. I means that they're identical twins. I prime is fraternal, and we're given the probability of fraternal twins is p, and the probability of identical twins is one minus p. And it also says the probability that they're the same sex given that they're fraternal twins is 50-50 or 50%. So here we want to find the probability that they're identical twins given they're the same sex. The twins have the same sex. Well, this can be rewritten as the probability of I comma S over S. And then we can rewrite this conditional to the probability S given they're identical. So that's the probability of the same sex given they're identical twins times the probability that they're identical twins. And this is all over the probability that they're the same sex. Well, this one we don't know, so we, we're going to calculate it right here. And then we're going to introduce um, a, a set of variables here. So the probability of S intersect and then I union uh, I prime that's the entire that's one so if you intersect with something bigger you're going to get s back so this is the same but then we can distribute this in into each of those so that's the probability of s intersect i plus probability of s intersect i prime but we can change though each of those two conditionals probability of s given i probably of i here and this says the probability that they're same sex given they're identical twins. Well, that's one. Probability of identical twins is one minus P. The probability of the same sex given they're fraternal twins is 50-50. And the probability of being fraternal twins is P. So you can combine those into two minus P. And then we're going to put that back in here. So the probability of the same sex given they're identical is one. Probability of identical twins is one minus P. And the prob this probability of S we found here is it goes here. And then you can solve that and you get 2Q. Now notice that Q is 1 minus P. So 2 times Q, 1 plus Q. And that's the answer. Number 6. A random variable X has a Poisson distribution with a mean of 3. What is the probability that x is bounded by 1 and 3? That is, the probability that x is between 1 and 3. So here, 
Exam two, problem number six. We're given that it's a Poisson and we want to find this probability that X is between one and three. Well, we don't know what the parameter lambda is, but they do tell us that the mean is three. Well, the mean means expected value of X. So let's find the expected value of X in a Poisson. Now, many of you, and for the test that you take, you should just instantly know that it's uh, lambda. But to derive it from first principles means we take X times the density, sum over all values. And notice that when X is zero, you're taking this time zero, so it, we don't even need to start at zero. We can start at one. But this X cancels with one of those X's and we'll start at once. So we start from one to infinity and it's the same density, but we took the X, one of the X's away here. Now let's, and since X is just the uh, indice, it's an index, we, it can be anything. It can be I, J, K, L, Y. Let's change it to Y. Let's let Y equal X minus one. And then we can solve that, that X is, is Y plus one. So wherever there's X's, we can substitute. So this X minus one will be Y. Here, this is just X, so it's X plus one. This X is X, Y plus one, I mean. And so we're going from Y plus one equals one to infinity. And um, we, we can take that one over and get go from Y equals zero to infinity times and there's a, the y plus one we take out one of the lambdas here well that's constant in this sum so let's take it to the front and sum this well this is the density of a poisson which is one and then one times lambda you get lambda so the probability that, that x is between one and three is is f of one plus f of two f of three you plug in those uh values you know the one into the density and now we just solve for lambda and that was three and then you can solve that, and we get 12 times e raised to the minus 3. Number 7. A random variable x has a density function f of x equal to 1 minus absolute value of x for the absolute value of x less than 1 and is equal to 0 elsewhere. What is the variance of x? Problem number 7 it asks us to find the variance of x. So given this distribution, this problem number seven is f of x equal to one minus absolute value of x. So I drew the picture to illustrate what region or area we're over. And we're asked to find the variance of x, which is the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x quantity squared. Now, on test day, you should see this and know that the mean would be zero. But let's derive it from first principles. The expected value of x is you integrate over all possible values of an x times f of x dx. But here, this absolute value plays a little tricky part. We have to um, substitute. We have to to integrate over different parts where x is positive and x is negative. So we want one minus x but when we're integrating over the negative regions this x is negative so really that's one minus x because that's that's a hidden minus x and then this is just x times one minus x so you integrate this you get uh one half x squared one third uh x cubed limits of integration this integrates to that equals one just what we thought. So now we take the expected value of x squared. So we take x squared times the density. We have to again break it up in the two regions. So we go from negative one to zero and we get this, one to zero, this, it integrates, integrates, substitute in, we get one sixth. So substituting into this formula here, the variance is expected value of x squared minus, and this is zero, so that goes away. So the variance is just one sixth. Number eight, let X and Y be discrete random variables with joint probability function F of X, Y 
equal to 1 over 21 times x plus y for x equal to 1, 2, 3 and y equal to 1, 2 and 0 elsewhere. What is the conditional probability density function of x given that y is equal to 2? Here the number 8 we want to find the conditional uh, density of f of x given that y equals 2. But first we need to find the marginal of y, which is this. So that means we're going to take the mar or the joint density and, and sum over all possible x values. So we just do that. So when x is 1, we get this. We put x or 1 in for x. When it's 2, when it's 3, we add those up, we get 2 plus y over 7. So now we, we this conditional density can be written as the joint density over the marginal. So um, this joint density when y is equal to 2 is this and uh, the marginal that when y is equal to 2 so you plug in 2 there and you, so you get 4 over 7 you invert multiply you get x plus 2 over 12. Problem number nine. Events A and B are identical, are independent, and A and C are mutually exclusive, and B and C are independent, and if A is equal to one half, and the probability of B is equal to one fourth, and the probability of C is equal to one eighth, what is the probability of A union B union C? So here, we are given some conditions that A and B are independent, that, that A intersect C is uh, the null set, so that their probability um, is zero, I mean, or they're mutually exclusive, so that's zero. Uh, that B and C are independent, so we can break it up, and we were given each of the probabilities. We want to find the probability of A union B union C. So that is this shaded set here in a Venn diagram. The square represents the whole set. So if we break it up into pieces and we find the probability of A, add it to the probability of B, probability of C, then we've added these regions twice right here. So let's subtract one of them, each of those. And, but in subtracting this region here, and then that, and then this, we've actually subtracted this inner piece one too many times. So let's add it back. Now, given the conditions that we have, we can plug in values. A, B, C. Now, A and B are independent, so it's the product. Those events, A union C is mutually, or mutually exclusive, so that probability is zero. This can be broken up into the, the, their independence, so it's the product of the two. And then since um, A and C are mutually exclusive, this union, or I mean intersection, is also zero, so the probability is zero. Then those add to 23 over 32.